What's up, folks? Like we said, we're talking all about the future of fabricating human skin with hair in it. Yeah. Um, kind of interesting. Um, imagine if instead of using Rogaine or getting hair plugs, you can use a 3D printer to print out new skin with hair right there in the lab. Um, scientists from RPI, and we just looked this up. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute um, are turning this kind of wild idea into reality. Um, they can create skin with hair in it, real hair, um, using a 3D printer, which is kind of whack, but awesome. It, and what makes it crazier to me is I, I, would, I would have thought that the drive for this technology would be the aesthetic side, which is there's this huge demand for people that want to get hair transplants and whatnot, try to see if we can um, address that market. But no, it turns out that your hair follicles actually have like a lot of function for regulating your body's temperature. Um, they're the major receptors for topical ointments and applications of the sort. So if, if we could do something like replicating the human skin that actually has functional hair follicles, it would be pretty good for medis- medical development. But obviously, the aesthetic portion isn't trivial either. It's not. Right? It's not. Not at all. Um, one of the things that I think of, obviously, outside of, like, I think all my social media knows that I'm a male. Um, so even though I still luckily have a full head of hair, I've been inundated by ads saying like, take this medicine to preserve your hairline or go to this doctor to get hair plugs or travel to Turkey to get hair plugs, right? <laughs> like, I, obviously it's all kind of crazy and I feel like that's like kind of what makes this topic. Stop kinda, wearing hats, you yeah, know? Like... Top, oh no, I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> Make, makes this topic kind of buzzier. Like get a certain... Uh, shower head that helps filter out chemicals so you don't lose hair etc yeah. um it, that that's a big deal obviously for an aesthetic purpose but i also think about folks like burn victims um if their burn is severe enough and it damages the hair follicles the hair doesn't grow back properly mm-hmm. um so in addition to you know men with male pattern baldness that want to reestablish their hairlines etc right there's a real medical purpose for this as well it's like um lots of folks and actually this is where this team got started is developing skin grafts for burn victims Mm -hmm. um they're now being they're one of the first teams that are able to really fabricate skin from the ground up that have like real vascular patterns in it so they started by 3d printing skin and veins and the veins function properly and now they're one of the first teams to do it with real functioning hair follicles as well I, i think if i'm not mistaken um this specific team was the first to do it with, with the uh, veins that are actually functional within a skin graft. So that that's what makes them so impressive here. They're, they're the trailblazers when it comes to um, artificial tissue slash skin development. Now, I, I guess it's worth talking about their previous research, which is how, how do they tackle um, the skin development? Well, they use this like very popular approach of 3D printing using bio ink. We've talked about bio ink at, at least a dozen times, I feel like, by now on this podcast. We've talked about bio ink for tissue engineering. We talked about it for creating heart, um, a heart replica that has a functional valve. We've even talked about it for 3D printing bones as well. Exactly. So what, what they've done here is that they create a culture of skin cells and then they uh, mix it with the necessary proteins and whatever to make sure that it's able to sustain and grow. And then layer by layer, they create the skin um, from the ground up, just as, you know, that's the main benefit of additive manufacturing is that you get to architect the entire geometry. You choose the geometry, right? And they they use this, they call it ink, but I think that's a little bit misleading because in my mind, at least as a lay person, ink sends me to think like, oh, it's a liquid. Mm -hmm. It's actually a gel. And, you know, if, if they treat it very carefully, they can print in these patterns and it, it holds the microstructure that they want. So think of it kind of like uh, more like jello, let's say coming out of a nozzle. Um, they mix, like you said, a culture of skin cells or I think parasite cells were the mm-hmm. ones that, and not parasite, like a, you know, something <laughs> leaching off of you, parasite, P E R I C Y T E, um, parasite cells, those help form the vein structure. So they, it's specialized to like, this is vein tissue, this is skin tissue. And and in the future they're going to, or they've worked on like, this is hair follicle cells. Um, They mix it with animal collagen, which kind of makes it like that, that jelly texture. And then Mm -hmm. they're able to 3d print it out of a nozzle using the shape that they want. Um, And obviously like, like we were talking about in their previous research, they were able to get 
cells that specialized and then continued to grow into a like 3d printed skin tissue that that was living breathing functioning um using skills uh, skin cells and then obviously the vascular cells to make blood vessels so they were able to create real skin with blood vessels that circulate that could circulate blood into that skin tissue um but like you mentioned at least in terms of drug development for topical ointments and for treatment of skin conditions, um, they use these like fabricated or, or 3d printed tissues for testing. Um, but these traditional skin models completely lack the complexity with hair, hair follicles. And like you said, hair follicles, um, are the main, uh, gateway let's say by which topical drugs can enter the bloodstream so it's like how am i going to develop a topical drug how am i going to test it in a laboratory setting um if i don't even if i haven't even included the geometry of the the, the major portway in, into the body mm-hmm. um so this team kind of stepped it up a notch they say all right we, we can already do skin we can already do the vascular skin with blood vessels let's try and also implement one of the most important structures in the geometry of the skin which is the hair follicle as well yeah, and I feel like prior to having access to this type of uh, this type of resource, where you can mimic um, the human skin and the human skin with the hair follicles, you just had to kind of resort to animal testing. Mm-hmm. And we can see both in like the medical sector and the beauty sector, I guess the beauty industry, where you got a lot of makeup companies. We're, we're moving away from animal testing. People are just not okay with that anymore for ethical reasons. Yeah, of course, and it totally makes sense. So we need to have alternatives that still allow us to test these drugs and make sure they're safe for human use. Yeah, well, absolutely. I don't want there to be inhumane testing of you know a certain ointment that I'm going to use in my skin on animals, right? Mm-hmm. But I also don't want to put <laughs> some Untested, dangerous ointment yeah. on my skin that hasn't been tested. Um, so like you're saying, we have to find a new solution here. And it, it sounds like uh, this team from RPI might have found a way forward. Yeah. And well, let's talk about their sauce. How do they do it, right? Um, the genius is still within uh, this, this additive manufacturing approach, right? They are bringing forward the work they did to create the uh, the skin tissue. And just as you had mentioned, we're going layer by layer. Well, within these layers, you can actually um, create channels. You can, you have full control of the geometry. So you can create channels where you deposit these uh, specific hair cells. And over time, as... Um, what's what's the right word here? As it cures, I guess, as, as the tissue is... Uh, the cells are combining and becoming the mm-hmm. tissue. Um, what they've started to realize is that these uh, skin cells and hair cells go through a process of self-assembly and create that like bulbous shape where uh, you would expect you know, that, there, that the f- hair follicle would form. Now, so far, these tissues don't last more than two or three weeks, so they haven't been able to see hair grow. That's just not enough time for hair to grow. But they, um, the assumption here is that if given more time, you would start seeing hair come out of those uh, bulbous, uh, empty holes. That well, and if you've, n- if you've never seen what uh, the cross-section of a hair follicle looks like, you should check out this article or go Google it on Google, right? Yeah, get go, diagrams. Go, go check it out. See what it looks like. Like, you're saying bulbous. It, it, like, it looks like you took a cross-section of an onion and buried it in the skin, right? This is at, like, the you know, super microscopic yeah. level. It, it, it's just a big bulb under the skin and yeah. it produces the keratin protein that grows out his hair. Um, and obviously, like we said, it's got all these other relations to you know, sweat and oil glands. It's got relations to like getting topical ointments into your bloodstream, um, doing thermal regulation of the body. So there's a lot that goes into the hair follicle, mm-hmm. but um, pretty encouraging that they're able to print in this geometry, right? To mimic the hair follicle geometry and then watch those cells in the bio ink grow and start to specialize in, in the way that they intended them to. Obviously, like you said, the, the lifespan of these tissues are pretty limited. Um, I think that there's probably a couple next steps for their work that, that bridge off of this. One of those being, let's try and make sure that we can extend the lifespan of these tissues for the laboratory and drug testing scenario, right? If you, you want to like effectively test whether these tissues can grow hair and, like be a true surrogate for testing on human skin. Um, you're going to need it to grow longer or yeah. to live longer so that it can grow hair um, and and be a true accurate um, analogy for testing on the human body. I would say the second 
avenue that they want to explore here is maybe they're able to ex- extend the lifespan to, you know, a couple months in the lab. Um, also trying to understand what it looks like to transplant that, um, use it as a skin graft mm-hmm. um, that can actually grow hair um, onto burn victims. A lot of the artificially manufactured skin grafts right now aren't, you know, they aren't able to grow hair. Um, and they, one of the things that the lead researchers mentioned is a lot of those artificially manufactured skin grafts aren't even real skin grafts. They're, they're a lot more like a really, really advanced, really fancy bandaid. Um, so this is something interesting. They're, they're using a 3d printer to manufacture real living tissue with real living cells. All right. It starts as cells suspended in this gel and then it grows into real tissue over a period of time. Um, they can not only make skin with blood vessels in it, you know, they can also create these channels that, with, with cells that eventually specialize and become hair follicles, which is really interesting as well. For sure. And another thing um, that, that I'm wondering is, you know, a potential unintended consequence of doing this work is now that we're taking on, we're, we're mimicking what we're composed of. The, we're essentially creating skin from the ground up. And the purpose of it is just like you mentioned already, either using it as a graft or doing medical research to make sure the things that we're creating to put on ourselves are actually safe. I'm wondering if an unintended consequence of all this is us better understanding how hair cells and hair follicles and skin in general operates because now we have this uh, repeatable, perfect test scenario that we can experiment on over and over and over again and increase our uh, existing understanding of how, you know, I, I didn't know how important a hair follicle was until I read this. So now I'm curious, like, will we learn more about it through um, these trials and whatnot. Well, and obviously I'm excited, like, like you're saying with, with better understanding of how this, you know, manufacturing tissue in in this case, skin, right. With the complex systems that are involved, involving the hair follicles and all the other, um, subsystems of the body that that impacts. I wonder if this also unlocks some level of understanding for creating other sorts of complex tissues in the body as well. It's an interesting trend that we've talked about multiple times on the podcast, right? That there's an interest in being able to manufacture tissue in a laboratory setting, whether it be for drug testing or whether it be for implantation into, into a patient. Um, this is seems like a huge breakthrough here where they, they've really started to, at least from my perception, start to crack the code on like, using engineering and manufacturing to create tissue. So it's like bridging the gap between like these hard disciplines in engineering and then like the medical life sciences domain. It, it feels like they've started to bridge that gap. Yeah. Yeah. It's super exciting. Do you think, uh, you know, take, taking a, a step out of the uh, details of this article, just from a high level, how, how far away do you think we are from achieving um, skin grafts with functional hair follicles. Um, do you think we'll see it in the next 10 years or so? I, I'd like to think so, especially in the context of like growing hair or creating skin grafts that can grow hair for burn victims. Um, I, I feel sincerely for folks who are burn victims. I think about my brother all the time cause he's a firefighter. Like if he were ever involved in an accident, he got burned. Um, like it would be really, really sad if he wasn't able to grow hair. Um, you, you know, once that burn healed and he wasn't able to grow hair on his head or something like that. Right. Obviously skin grafts are already used as a method of treatment for that. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be awesome if those skin grafts could also, um, produce hair in a way that like he could feel comfortably aesthetically with his head. Um, that being said, I don't think we'll see it in an aesthetic scenario. Like it doesn't make sense to me, at least in this case, like as a replacement for hair transplant, um, because you're not, just implanting hair follicles into the head. This is truly fully engineering tissue. This this is like saying like if I was bald, you have to scalp me, and then <laughs> then implant this new three D printed skin grafts um, to to be able to grow hair. But I don't know. Maybe they're able to three D print just the follicle and implant those. That that'd be interesting as opposed to yeah. I'm not even sure truly like isolating how, it. I'm not sure truly how hair transplant surgery works. I haven't looked into it that much, but. I, I imagine they're pulling hair follicles that are working from some other part of your body and then implanting them into your head. Um, that that creates two surgery sites. Maybe this creates only one. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, def, definitely a little interesting. Um, and I don't know. I, obviously, it's it's a little bit buzzy. We talked about like m- mostly joking here, like stop using Rogaine, don't use <laughs> yeah. hair plugs. But there, there's a true clinical usage for creating skin grafts with hair, uh, hair that can grow. And then obviously 
I'm super interested to see if there are additional breakthroughs in the development rate of like treatment for skin conditions and stuff like that. Now that they're able to use in a low risk scenario, right? Using a a laboratory surrogate for skin, um, laboratory engineered tissue rather than testing on real skin or testing on animals, um, to try and develop drugs faster, um, related to skin conditions and other topical developments and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, as you can probably tell by, by the way I've talked about this episode, I I'm pretty like cautiously optimistic that we'll see this technology be used for development of new drugs, like at least within the next 10 years. But maybe even at the tail end of it, hopefully we'll be able to see skin grafts for um, in medical applications for burn victims. That that would be awesome. Um, I do not see this being used for like aesthetic purposes anytime soon. Just like you said, there's still a, a couple more uh, barriers to get through. But um, interesting ideas you threw out there. I don't know. Um, maybe it's possible. With that said, I think you should wrap up and give us a quick TLDR uh, rundown of what's going on here. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so. Like we said, this this whole team, it's a team of engineers who've put their heads together to try and understand how they can print new hair, or new skin with hair, right, right in the lab, using a 3D printer. Um, they start by using real skin cells, real vascular cells, which are for, for veins and blood vessels, and real hair follicle cells. They grow them in a Petri dish, and then they mix them up to this ink, which is kind of like a, a jello type material that's printed out of a nozzle using a 3D printer into the desired shape. They allow these cells to grow and it turns from a collection of cells floating in gel into real life flesh with hair and blood vessels that function. Right now that flesh only lives for about three weeks, but they're doing their best to extend the lifespan of that so we can use it for drug testing and potential implantation for treatment of you know stuff like burn victims. Perfect. Money. Um, I will say before we wrap up this episode, we have to say thank you to the folks in Oman. We are trending there. Yes. Um, and... As a promise that we made at the beginning of this year, we're going to learn how to say thank you to each of those people or to each of the countries where we're trending um, in, in their m- majority or their official language. In Oman, uh, I believe they speak Arabic. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to say shukran. Uh, hey. Thank you to the folks in Oman for helping us trend there. Obviously, everyone who's a big part of this community, we appreciate you, but especially the folks that are helping us pop onto their trending charts. That's extra interesting. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, Everyone, thank you so much for listening. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.